So God appeared to him in this burning bush and said, Moses, my servant, I have heard the cry of my people, I have seen the affliction, and I have chosen to deliver them from the house of bondage in Egypt and send them to a promised land, a land of plenty, flowing with milk and honey. It is you to go and do the work. He had many excuses. He said, no, I can't. I'm a stammerer. I'm not able. Uh, and he was implored by God and said, I'm going to give you somebody to speak on your behalf. He accepted and he went and delivered the children of Israel. Now, the point I want us to learn from him is in chapter 18, from verse uh, 13, we see him being visited by his father-in-law when he took so long to come and take his family, his wife and children, whom he left behind. And the father-in-law said, I decided to go and look at what this man is doing and hand over his family to him. He's a very irresponsible son-in-law, he might have thought. And he took the children and the wife and he came. He was greeted and welcomed. But the following morning he saw Moses governing the people. From morning to evening, people are standing around him while he's seated alone from daybreak to sunset. Sunrise to sunset. And the father-in-law was perturbed. What were you doing with these people? And he said, I'm, I've been made their judge by God. I'm judging small cases and bigger cases and I am listening to their stories and I'm giving them the verdict, what God has said and, and he struggled. And the father-in-law watched at him and said, poor man, you're going to wear yourself out and you're going to die and these people are not going to be served. You must learn to delegate a portion, section of your leadership and have others do what you are not able to do it yourself. Great learning for us leaders. Do we die alone or do we trust others and delegate authority and responsibility to them also to share in the ministry? That's why in the Anglican Church we have the bishop, you have your archdeacons, you have the vicars of the parishes, you have, uh, you know, uh, the lay leaders, you have uh, uh, the, the, the curates, so that this work is shared in equal measure. And I just want to read the ending of that section uh, in chapter 18 of Exodus. Uh, after the advice, verse uh, 22, uh, this man was told, let the people sit, uh, the people you, you choose sit as judges for the people at all times. Let them bring every important case to you but decide every matter, uh, decide every minor and cases themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. And if you do this, and God so command, then you will be able to endure. And all these people will go their homes in peace, satisfied. Amen? So when we share responsibility, it makes the Lord easier. And Bishop, we believe you have run for those 20 years because you have shared responsibility. We'll be looking for the next leader. The beauty of the Anglican Church is that we are governed by a constitution that we all ascribe to and follow, but governed by our tradition and led by the Spirit of God. In the day of our consecration, we also announced the day of our exit. And we remember in 2004, Bishop Joseph stood here and said, I will relinquish my office on or before, but not later than midnight of the 15th of April, 2024. That was said 20 years ago. To tomorrow night is that hour. So he will relinquish his office tomorrow night. Today we are celebrating his ministry. However, the Anglican Church does not leave a vacuum. When there is no bishop, the archbishop takes over. So people of uh, Mount Kenya West, I'm now your bishop. We will begin the process 
until we get the bishop and consecrate. Then I leave the diocese to that person. Let me give you a glimpse of our process. As soon as he retire, I will come here and announce the diocese is vacant. We open nominations for one month. All those clergy who want to become bishops, you will be free to be nominated. A nomination will be, you must get five people nominating you. Three clergy, two laity, and you, yourself, sign you accept nomination. We shall close those nominations, and the days are already there, by noon of that particular day. If you bring it five minutes late, you are disqualified. So, guard yourselves. Then, after one month is over, I have already put up a, a search committee. The search will sit here, comprised of 12 people, six from this diocese, and six from all over Kenya, two bishops, two priests, and two laity. They will interview thoroughly those who want to become bishops. Listen to their story, their focus, their vision a whole day. And even if it needs to take two days, we don't care. So long as they are well interviewed. They clear only up to three. three. So the following month, so I hope you are counting the month I'm going to be your bishop. <laughs> the third month, there will be an electoral college which will sit to uh, do the election of the three. And it is a delegation of 23 people. 16 from this diocese and uh, 7 from all over Kenya. Three bishops, two clergy and two laity from many other areas. But we are not going to give you anybody from central Kenya. They'll come from Mombasa, they'll come from Nyanza, they'll come from western, they'll come from, but not central Kenya. So that we have a, because all the six, 16 from here are from this region. So you'll have a fair hearing of our people from all over the, the country participating in the election of a bishop in the Anglican Church. They will cast their vote and we get our bishop. But uh, here, we'll have to wait a little bit of that process because the first thing we shall have to come and fix is to hold your synod, which was halted, so that we get the standing committee of synod, which translates into an electoral college. Are we together? So I want to urge all those who have run to court, the church matters are not dealt in the court, they are dealt within here. Uh, get those cases out. I'll be coming to chair the synod, and the synod will give us the standing committee, which will give us an electoral college, and we shall have the election of the next bishop. So if you delay that process, you'll delay getting your bishop, and I will enjoy being your bishop, so don't worry. Now, back to Moses. How did Moses finish? Because he missed one command. You remember he missed one command. He was told pray to the rock to get water to the children of Israel because he was being disturbed. And I know you are excellent. How the people of Kenya disturb you sometimes. And they also disturb the bishop and they disturb me. When, when he was worked up, you know, Moses was also worked up. And then he hit the rock instead of uh, praying. What happened? He missed the promised land. Did you know that? He missed the promised land. So let us keep the rules to the latter so that we don't miss out. We don't want you, Bishop, after working so hard to leave this church in bitterness, you may miss the promised land. Release it. Forgive. And they also forgive you and release. So all the bruises should go away. And we begin a new slate because you have a life after this. This church will still need you, will still use you, and we thank God for you. So let us not finish like Moses who missed out the promised land. He was also only shown by at far, but he did not enter it. The goodness is that the Lord went with him. So I think he, he didn't miss heaven. He didn't miss heaven. He only missed the promised land, but he went to heaven. So let, let's make sure that we don't miss it. We don't miss it. We don't miss what God has promised us. Now Solomon. Solomon in First Kings chapter 3. And uh, 
beginning from verse uh, 10, 